I'm having a hard time believing my own eyes. Come inside, let's take a look at this thing. So I'm down here at Zim's Guitars in Mesa, Arizona. Thank you guys for watching. So, like I said, I'm having a hard time believing my own eyes. This guitar came in, Squire, made in USA. No, come on now. It's got to be something weird about it. It's got to be a fake or something. Let's put it back on the bench. Let's restring it. Let's talk about this a little bit. Here we go. Okay, so I've got this thing back on the bench. And it's kind of blowing my mind right here because it's a Squire by Fender Stratocaster. It's got an E9 serial number, but it says Made in USA on it. And I'm telling myself, now hold on, there's no such thing as a Made in USA Squire. So what is going on with this thing? We're going to take it apart. I noticed that a couple of the screws are weird. Um, back here on the back, I noticed that the neck plate, the bolts are weird. Now, it looks like a Squire, the way the holes are drilled here and everything. But these tuners are super weird, so I have to, in my line of work, I have to restring stuff. I have to fix it up as nice as I can and see what things actually are. So we're going to pull the pick guard off of here. We're going to see if I can change those neck bolts. I'll probably change these weird tuners. And so it's going to be a fun day. The strings don't feel too bad. But I'm going to go ahead and pull these things off of here. Okay, so I want to take a look. You know the first thing we should do? Let's test these electronics a little bit just by tapping on them with a screwdriver. Okay, seems good. Yeah, so this guitar kind of surprised me a little bit. And so because of that, we're not just going to throw strings on it. We're going to kind of try to deep dive into this a little bit. We're going to try to figure out exactly what we have here. And so some of these uh, pickguard screws, uh, you can see that they're like the, what would you call that, like a stainless steel one instead of chrome. I am not going to reuse those because I have a whole thing of really nice chrome ones that I can put in there. That one's super short and not good. That one instantly into the trash can. So, you know, because the screws are different here, this is most likely, I can almost guarantee, this is one of those parts casters. So where you take a, you know, it's a parts guitar. It's kind of cool. It's kind of like, you know, back in the old days, we would have our Camaro if we were lucky, or we'd have an old car. And you could interchange parts. You could throw a different carburetor or intake. You could throw some headers on it or whatever. And you could kind of soup it up a little bit. And that's the same theory when it comes to a Fender Strat. A lot of parts are interchangeable. Now, normally you can't interchange Squire parts on any Fender stuff made in Mexico or made in USA. Squire stuff is just a little bit different. It looks very close, but it's just a little bit different. So those parts aren't really interchangeable. They don't fit in the neck pocket just right. 
The pit guard holes are, you know, in strange places. But this guitar apparently is a made in USA Squire. And so chatting with some of the guys that come into the store, a few guys have told me, let me show you this uh, serial number and everything on here again. I've seen this and I'm like, you guys gotta be kidding me. It's not, there's no such thing as a made in USA Squire. But apparently what happened in 1989 or late 88 they were remodeling or they were doing something in the plant in Japan changing ownership doing something Fender was up to something and uh, they decided to go ahead and for about nine months they started making some squires in California. Here we go. Let's see what we got down here. We got a big swimming pool route. By the looks of this, to me, these pickups with the two magnets, to me, this looks like made in Mexico stuff. And now by the looks of this body, see where the screw holes didn't match up just right and they had to redrill one? So that's kind of what happens when you try to mix made in Mexico stuff with Squire stuff. You see how it's not for the uh, truss rod adjustment on this neck is right here in the heel. And you can see how the body has been all dinged up and hacked up right there. So I'm going to say, and Fender would never do anything with tape. So I'm going to say this is somebody's parts caster. But to me, it does look like a Squire body with a Squire bridge and maybe some, you know, very similar to Made in Mexico. So it's hard to say. Somebody's parts caster of some sort. But it's kind of cool. But let's just do our best to put it back together and try to get it to play nice. So that's basically what we're looking at there. You know, there's a couple things that I could do. If I really wanted to, I probably could take my Dremel and I could make a little, I could do a little cutout right here to make it easier to get to that truss rod. If I wanted to spend a little time with this, I probably could do a few things to make it a better, plain, easier, uh, just an overall better guitar. Some upgrades. Let me think, should I just get into that? I think I will, what the heck. We got time to kill, so here we go. We're gonna do a few things. Let me see if I can get this neck off of here easily enough. These do not look like fender neck bolts to me. I mean, they're working, but I don't like the look of them. So I'm just gonna get, just gonna get rid of those. All right, so I got the neck off, and so now what I see right here. Now I haven't run into one of these, but we have a Stumac neck shim that was laying in here, a point twenty-five degree Stumac neck shim. So it seemed like the guitar played good with this in there. So I think I'm going to leave that and we will reinstall that. Let's look at the back of this neck here and see if anything leaves any kind of a clue. So I'm saying that looks like 24-3-90. So are we going to say it's the 24th day of March 1990. Boy, those things really got sort of. I probably should try to fill those up again. So I'm going to say there's a date of the 24th day of March 1990 on the back of that. Okay, so 
So a little rat file right there, rat tail file. I don't know, I think that might be okay. Can't hurt anything, right? That might uh, actually help. Okay, while vacuuming, I just noticed something here. So to me, this looks like December 4th of 89. Okay, so, so I think that, and there's an M on both of them. So maybe these did belong together. It seems a little strange, but it fits in the pocket nicely. So maybe because of these numbers, where this one looks like March on the neck, it looks like March of 1990, and the body looks like December of 89. Okay, I got brand new screws for this pick guard. So this, I think it's gonna help the overall appearance of this guitar dramatically by putting nice, brand new chrome pickguard screws. So I do have a customer in the store right now and he's a good player. He's crushing it over there. We can listen. Customer supplied background music. Sounds like a little bluesy riff. Sometimes, man, you would be shocked. Working in a guitar shop once in a while, you'll get a customer that sets and plays, and you are just blown away by how talented the guys are that come in. Then a lot of times you will get a lot of uh, kids that come in and play. And uh, once in a while, they'll surprise you too. I mean, every once in a while, I'll have a seven string or an eight string guitar. And for some of us older boomers, I don't want to call myself that old, but for some of us older guys, we have no idea what to do with a eight string guitar. But there'll be 20 year old kids that come in here and they just freaking shred on those things. So, you know, that's kind of cool, right? Okay, so that looks good. Some of the screw holes are kind of, almost maybe should have filled a couple of those up with some toothpicks. Let's put this tip back on there. Clean it a tiny bit. So these saddles, I'm noticing are all out of adjustment and really ugly, dirty. So while I'm in here, right? Let me do something here. All right, so this one, this screw right here, it looks black to me. And so I'm going to take this one out, take this one off, and see if I can find a spring. That's chrome, it's just dirty.
Sometimes cleaning a guitar makes all the difference in the world. When it comes to resale, right? I'm, I'm down here flipping used guitars. And I love my job. I'm not bitching about it. I love my job. But there's a lot of cleaning that happens. And uh, I really enjoy cleaning guitars. I wish I could clean my house the same way, but I'm not so much into cleaning and doing the dishes. Mopping up the floor, but I do enjoy cleaning a guitar every once in a while. So we're going to just put this back on. Just try to get it back to where it sort of was. Okay, it's a little bit cleaner. Okay, I'm going to fill these holes a little bit so that we've got a little bit more wood for these uh, neck bolts to sort of screw into. It seemed like uh, these were pretty reamed out pretty good. So we'll just put some uh, I got some fairly big toothpicks and when I see stuff like this, I, you know, it, it, it holds it in there better. So, maybe even tap them down in there a little bit. Okay, so these are the neck bolts that were on there. And those don't belong. I think I'm going to change it with these. I've got a couple of these. And so I'm going to try to uh, polish these up a little tiny bit. See what happens here. They're kind of dull. They're not new. They're stuff I had laying around. So I try my best to recondition guitars without dropping a bunch of money on them. And this is its back plate, so it's all scratched up. But just try to shine things up, that's all I can do. These neck bolts, I'm going to put these in a box of random screws, like wood screws. Okay, so here's what I'm going to address next. And it's these tuners, so these are the weirdest things that I have ever seen where you've got a, this one's even broken, but you've got a screw hole here and a screw hole here. There's one on each side. So I think that's a replacement for those old chromed back covered ones. You know, the ones that had the big back cover, the imported ones. And these things have no screws on any of them. So these things definitely are coming off and I need to do something about these so let's pull these off of here because these things look weird and I have tons of tuners laying around I know I can do something better than what's on here I do need to make sure that they stay chrome though because I got a lot of black ones a lot of black tuners but I need to, uh, we need to fix this up, make this look better. These things were not attached properly. You know, I think there's a crack in this headstock. Put these things off and we can look a little bit closer. Guitars are made of wood. We all know that. And wood cracks. And it can be glued back together. So sometimes cracks aren't exactly the end of the world when it comes to a guitar. Does it hurt the value? Absolutely. Is it the end of the world? Not always. Are you going to be able to get a playable guitar out of this thing? I'm going to say yes, we are. We haven't really even addressed the frets on this yet, but let's do this, these tuners and get these weird ones off of here. And, and maybe... Maybe I'm making a mistake because this is the, no, these can't be the stock tuners. What's it say on the bottom there? 
It says Japan. So what a strange thing. That one's broken. But, uh, uh, yeah. So the guitar says Squire, made in USA, with some old school Japan parts on there. Again, I did a little bit of research and I got friends that came in and they told me a story. Yeah, they were rebuilding the warehouse or they were doing something. And for some reason, for six to nine months or something, they decided to build some squires right there in California. Yeah, there's a crack that runs through here. Oh, it runs all the way down into here. But it's stable. Yeah, that's a shame. We're going to put some polish on this and hope we don't take the whole label with it, right? Let's do that. Come on now. There we go. A little bit on here. So it does have a crack. That's the old head, the headstock label come right off of there, right? We got clay dots, and that seems like it's glued in there nice and tight. Too bad about the crack in there. Guys are like, you're wasting your time working on a guitar that has a headstock crack. I disagree. I think it's worthy of fixing this bad boy up and shining it up as nicely as I can. I have parts laying all over the place. It borderline needs a uh, level and crown. So these are going in here nicely. Some guitar parts are interchangeable and it works real quick and easy. Other times, yeah, not so much. Oh, and I even got a little bag of screws, which is helpful. These little screws sometimes are hard to come by. So here we go. Guys, if you're this far into the video, thank you so much for watching, hanging out with me today. It is a Sunday right now when I am recording this. Sometimes on Sundays I get less customers, so it gives me more time to do this kind of stuff. Yesterday was a Saturday, naturally, and it was the, uh, the first Saturday of the month. I always seem to have a lot of customers on the first Saturday of the month. So it would have been next to impossible to do any kind of a restring video or any kind of a, uh, you know, the kind of videos I do. It would have been impossible yesterday. And my shop on Sundays, it's kind of hit or miss if I'm going to be open. If I've played a gig on Saturday night, I still play in a band, I'm a bass player. I'll miss being in the store on a Sunday because that's either, you know, I'm hung over from a gig that I played last night or a lot of times on Sunday mornings, my band, we, that's when we actually have rehearsal. So that's dedication right there when you're willing to show up and rehearse on a, on a Sunday morning. You can really see that crack right there. But that just means that I'll price this thing at about half price of what it would be without the crack, you know? So it's, it's going to be on the half price rack. Even with these, you know, this nice setup and the upgrades that I'm kind of doing to this. Okay. So let's put my little string tree back in. I made an USA Squire. I never thought I would see one of these. I didn't know they existed. But after doing research, it's, it's, it's a real thing. 
I thought maybe somebody just put a weird water slide decal on there. But no, this is a real, real thing, man. Who would have ever guessed? A made in USA Squire. I would have laughed at them. If somebody would have came in or called me on the phone and said, hey, I have a USA made Squire. I would have been, uh, no, no thank you. It was definitely somebody's guitar. And you know it's a quality guitar for the simple fact that there is some fret wear, which means somebody played this thing and somebody loved this guitar. You know the thing about Squires nowadays, nowadays here in the year 2022, is because of, you know, you would used to go into a guitar store and the Squires would be the most inexpensive line of guitars that you could buy. But because there's companies out there selling stuff like Glary and Firefly, and there's these other companies that have taken over that market. You know, the cheapest guitar on Amazon, Donners. There's those kind of, um, guitar companies out there now. So that has enabled Squire to, instead of being in the $119 for a brand new Squire, now Squires can be, you know, $300 guitars in the brand new market, not, not the old used ones. But it's been able to have a, like I said, Squire is now, the new ones are more of a mid-range, mid-priced guitar instead of the cheapest ones you can find. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. Now this guitar, if you've watched earlier in the video, it had this Stumac uh, neck shim. Okay, just for experimenting, I'm not gonna use that. And I'm going to go back and I'm just going to put a, let's just put a business card shim in it and see what happens, see how it plays. And you can see I cut that out. So now we've got room to get to the truss rod and let's see what this thing does without that giant shim in there. Because, you know, looking at some of the numbers on here, it does seem like, you know, I thought for sure this was a parts guitar that they put the neck on there. But after looking at uh, some numbers and, and some dates in the neck pocket and on the neck, it almost seems like these two were made for each other. A lot of guys, I know people are like, dude, don't use a drill. Okay, hopefully that. These screws will stay in there nice and tight. And sort of snug these down a little bit. So this right here, Getting rid of those old wood screws that were flathead wood screws, that made a big difference right there. As far as, uh, you know, making it look more original, right? I mean, it, it looks pretty good. All I can do now is uh, put some strings on it and uh, see how it plays. And if I have to, put that next shim back in there. I mean, I can. Let's get some super slinky nines and put on this thing. Yeah, baby, super slinky nines. There's nothing like a fresh set of strings.
Yeah, the string height is high. Okay, the next shim's going back in. I can tell with just one string. With just my one string on there, look at how high the string height is there. The nut looks like it's cut nicely, so anyhow. I'll put that next shim back in, that's no big Okay, so I looked in my drawer and I found a whammy bar that looks pretty good on there. It fits in nicely. Let's see if I can find a back plate for it. People want back plates. Okay, let's take a look. No, that one's close. It's white where I, I think a uh, sort of an off-white color would be better. This one's close though. The holes line up. Let me see if I have a better one. That one's pretty good. Some of these are for USA made ones, so close. Tons of fun, right guys? You know what, we're gonna go with this one. People always ask for the back plate, not always, but it makes the guitar look finished nicely. To me though, I prefer not to have them on. All right, so Made in USA Squire. Um, the story I heard is, uh, again, it was, uh, they were moving their plant, doing something in, in Japan in 1989, and they decided to make a couple of squires in Southern California, just for a nine month period or something like that. If you guys have heard anything about this story, leave it in the comments below if you've heard of anything that's going on during that time. <laughs> guitar I mean it's a, it's a strange one that's what's cool about it 1989 would you consider that vintage leave it in the comments is then is stuff from the 80s vintage now is stuff from the 90s vintage this one plays pretty good again it's borderline getting close to needing a, a, a Fred job, but it, it plays great. It has that Stumac uh, spacer in there. into my little practice amp under my uh, workbench here. When you do a setup on a guitar, you just, it's good to set and play them for a little while. Volume tuning. Guys, if you ever go and audition for a band, never tune your guitar at full volume. Second position sounds good. beat up but I think I made some good improvements on it and again the 1989 made in USA Squire question mark who knows but you know again thank you guys for watching and leave me some comments on this one okay
And if you watch this far into the video, thank you so much. Buddy, have a great day. Thank you.